Hey explorers, have you ever thought about how we put out fires? You might grab a cup of water, but today we're going to be looking at a different tool to help snuff out a flame. And it's even one that you can't see. It's carbon dioxide gas. Let's dive into the science behind fire and find out why CO2 is such an amazing fire stopper. Ooh. Oh, that is so cool. Fire needs three things to keep burning. It needs heat or an ignition point. It needs fuel like wood and it needs oxygen, which is in the air all around us. Take away one of these things and the fire goes out. Today, we're going to remove oxygen from that equation using carbon dioxide gas or CO2. CO2 is heavier than air, so it can smother the flame by cutting off its oxygen supply. The cool part? We're going to be creating carbon dioxide gas right here in the lab using some simple chemistry. The materials you'll need for this experiment are a jar, a cup, or a pitcher. You'll need some small candles, a lighter, and someone who can use a lighter safely. Plus, we'll need some vinegar and some baking soda and a spoon. The first step in this experiment is to place our candles on a flat surface and then light them. Remember to have someone who can safely use a lighter help you with this step if you need it. There we go. We've got both of our candles lit. So now we need our carbon dioxide gas. To make our chemical mixture, we'll need our baking soda, about two tablespoons. These can be rough estimates, so they do not need to be exact. You will still end up with carbon dioxide gas. And anyone who has been watching the show knows that this is one of my favorite chemical reactions because it's just so versatile. And again, here's just another great way that shows us how vinegar and baking soda combined together create something very useful. To our jar of baking soda, we need to add about a quarter cup of vinegar. So I'm going to measure that out. Doesn't need to be a lot, but it's going to have some really great effects. And then we're going to mix the two together. And anyone who's done this knows that we get these awesome bubbles. And these bubbles are actually CO2, but that gas is being kept in the jar because it's too heavy to float out. Because it's invisible, we can't quite see it, but we know that it hasn't escaped the jar. So what we can do now is just pour it gently over our flames and they go right out. The carbon dioxide gas has pushed the oxygen out of the way, removing one of the three things that fire needs to keep burning and the candles go right out. Did you know that this is how some fire extinguishers work? They use compressed carbon dioxide gas to snuff out flames. This is very helpful in places where water might cause more damage, like near electronics. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna try this experiment again because that was actually just really cool to watch. So we're gonna get some baking soda and I'm gonna light my candles. I'm gonna do a couple more candles this time. And then just add some vinegar here. I'm just gonna use my spoon here to stir it up. And this should leave us with an ample amount of carbon dioxide gas. So now here we go. Ooh. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> Remember to leave the firefighting to the pros, everybody. And there we go, explorers, the invisible power of carbon dioxide gas. If you tried this experiment at home or at school, remember to take some pictures or video and share them with us on social media. Subscribe to Clayton's Exploration Station on YouTube and social media so you don't miss out on any of the fun in the lab. Plus, you can head over to explorationstation.net to find the free worksheet for this experiment and more. If you'd like to support our ongoing adventures in education, you can also head over to Patreon and help support Clayton's Exploration Station. Until next time, you stay safe and stay curious out there, explorers. Clayton's Exploration Station.